Pepsi-Cola, P-E-P-S-I. That's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi-Cola presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy, calling Washington. United States Counter Spies especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, the case of the desert explosion. Another counter-spy report to the American people. Brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi-Cola hits a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. That's right. You heard what they said. Two full glasses of sparkling Pepsi from one big 12-ounce bottle. You're getting an extra glass full. And what a delicious glass full. The most refreshing, delightful cola that ever tickled your taste. You can't top Pepsi's tangy flavor. And that big, big bottle saves you money, goes twice as far. Pepsi's America's big, big favorite. And America's biggest cola value. So why take less when Pepsi's best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, to Counter Spy. Out in the desert mountains of Mexico, the heat has long since destroyed all life. Except high in the air, the ominous circling of great bloodthirsty birds of prey. And on the hard, sun-cracked earth, a small group of men with one woman moving slowly to the base of a cliff. Very well. We stop here. Senora. Senora. Listen to me, Senora. And you men, you will listen too. You have all worked for me for some years. I pay you well. No one in Mexico can deny that. But you know, too, I will not allow anyone to betray me and live. <laughs> this woman, this miserable wretch and her husband, one of my most successful operators in narcotics, tried to sell me out. Her husband? He is already dead. And now this woman shall die here. No, no! Her death will be a lesson to all of you. Never to talk. Never. Senora, look above you in the sky. You see the birds? The birds of death? Do the rest of you understand? I see you do. Now, Senora. No! Now, gentlemen, we shall leave. Some weeks later, at midnight, in a cafe in the Mexican city of Cordoba, a trim, alert-eyed girl sat drinking alone. As a young, roughly-dressed Mexican entered at the front door and approached her, she glanced down into her open purse and drew confidence from the twenty-five caliber revolver nestling there. <laughs> Hola, guapa. Keep it clean, Junior. <laughs> In Mexico, guapa means pretty. Pretty what? Pretty nifty. I know American slang too, no? No. Well, then you teach me. Teach is not in the mood. Oh, you have a little temper, but I sit down and help the mood to change. Eh? Ah, senorita, you are as beautiful as the doves of my native village. Take it easy, Buster. You'll weigh yourself out. <laughs> Hola, mozo. Dos cervezas. Sí, sí. Good to see you again, Pepe. You have news? He's taken a ranch house 20 miles outside the city. We? Oui? Me. You'll call me Ella Thomas. And the boss, Mr. Jones. I'm ready to work with you. 
the man we're after is Manuel Rodriguez. The Manuel Rodriguez? Careful, the waiter. Yes, si. Si, si, aquí está. Ah, muchas gracias, muchas gracias. Nada. Now, Pepe, tell me what you know about Rodriguez. He is one of the richest, most fantastic, most powerful men in Mexico. And one of the cruelest. An international broker of secret information. On his enormous ranch not far from here, he gives big uh, fiestas. Hey, hey. When American dancing shows come here, he invites everybody. He may keep guests for a week. People from all over the world. And, uh... Hmm. When I met on his ranch, are said to be large poppy fields for opium. He's a big dope smuggler. That's our boy. Most of his enemies disappear. He said he takes them into the desert and murders them. Others remain silent out of fear. It'll be a great thrill to outsmart him, Pepe. You have a plan? First, you're to get an ordinary peons job on the Rodriguez ranch. That ought to be easy. <laughs> At this time of the year, yes. In my hand, under the table, in small packages. Take them. See. I have them. The drug in the blue paper will cause large blotches on your skin. Just me. Now, they're harmless. The drug in pink paper will make the pupils of your eyes dilate. Uh Uh-huh. And the one in white paper, you'll run a quick high fever without any bad results. And uh, then? In two weeks, Mr. Jones and I will visit Manuel Rodriguez and his ranch. We will explain that we are agents of the United States government. Counter spies? Why not? And that we have come to arrest you. Oh. (laughs) Very good. (laughs) Now, another drink, eh? Hola, mozo! Mozo! And now, uh, what did you say your business was, uh, Mr., um... Jones. Oh. I didn't say, but I will, Mr. Rodriguez. Miss Thomas and I are agents of the United States government. Counter spot. On Mexican soil? We've just rented a place nine miles from your ranch here. The old Gomez place, huh? Oh, old is right. And the reason we're... And we're in Mexico to recover a quantity of a new uranium compound. Worth over a million dollars. It was stolen from one of our atomic plants. And you think I have it, Mr. Jones? We think it's here, on your ranch. I do not enjoy jokes of this kind. We'd already recovered the stuff and shipped the criminals back to the States for punishment. But before we could leave, too, the uranium compound was stolen again. And again, I ask, do you think I have it? Well, you know how to handle it. Let me, Ellen. Oh, for Pete's sake, let me finish a sentence once in a while. Mr. Rodriguez, as Miss Thomas says, you would know how to handle uranium. But the thief, we're afraid, is not. Incredible. You see, it was swept up along with some money, a watch, a few papers out of a safe in my room. How did you learn that, Mr. Jones? One of our peons confessed that two weeks ago he and another man got drunk and ransacked my room. The peon with a guilty conscience? Mr. Jones used a whip. That's how we found out about Pepe Ramirez. Pepe Ramirez? Ah, then he is working here. Follow me to his shack, please. We'll question him. I must tell you, however, he is very ill. My ranch doctor is back. Have you seen him yourself? Briefly. Is his skin badly blotched? Pupils of the eyes dilated? Is he running a high fever? How did you know his symptoms? Those are the early symptoms of uranium poisoning. That clinches the theft on Pepe, Mr. Jones. Through this door, please. Mr. Jones, do you mean that this miserable peon is hiding a million dollars worth of a new uranium compound? How else would he get uranium poisoning? Right here. Under my very nose. The shack is down this way. No! Senor Rodriguez, I did not steal. Pepe, these people want the truth. Better talk, Pepe. I am sick. I'll make you sicker. Pepe, where did you hide the uranium? I 
<laughs> One more chance, Pippi. We beat it out of you good. A whip, Mr. Jones? No, I think he's cracking now. Please, I did not know. See in this bunk. This bunk? That's better. Pull him out of there. No, please, please. I can't. To rip out the mattress. Put on your gloves first, Joe. Yeah. Gloves? They're special gloves. It's the only safe way to handle this stuff. Now, the mattress. Nothing. Try the board. Yeah. Is there anything? Here we are. See? That little bottle. Worth a million dollars? Maybe more. To some government abroad. Yes. I can imagine. Now, uh, may I offer you both some refreshment back in the house? No, thank you. We've got work to do at our own place. Perhaps I may call on you in the next few days. Business, Mr. Rodriguez? A purely social. If you don't mind, Miss Thomas. Not at all, Mr. Rodriguez. Jonesy, he fell for it 2,000%. A perfect trick. When he saw that little vial, his tongue hung out like a hound dog. A million bucks, he thought, right under his nose. And he hadn't known it. Jonesy. Hmm? Behind us on the road, the car following. Ten to one, it's Rodriguez. Following to see where we go with the bottle. Maybe find out if we really are counter spies or not. You think he was putting on an act back there? He's clever enough to. I swear he thought Pepe was really sick. Lucky those drugs you gave Pepe fooled the doctor. Huh? Nothing to do now but get back to the Gomez place and see what happens. With guns handy and backs to the wall. Yeah. That car still following? Same distance. Maybe Rodriguez will pay that social call of his right away. He fell for you hard. Yeah. He noticed you and I don't get along. I'm betting he makes a try for this little vial. He won't stop at anything if he thinks he can get away with it. And he may start tonight... Lurking around outside the ranch house, I've seen a shadow several times. Rodriguez? If she'd either go away or come in, I don't like the suspense. He may shoot. Stay away from the windows. Can't we pull something on him? We might. Yeah, let's try it. What? Get out our suitcases. Start packing as if we're leaving. Maybe that'll hustle him into action. I'm trying, anyhow. My bag's in the closet. Ella, I think if we drive the rest of the night, we can make El Paso by daylight. Sure we can. Check with the boss when we get there. Here's your briefcase. Keep it up, Ella. You know, it's a darn shame we got that call to leave so soon. I like this part of the country. Now we find out the worst. I'll go. Oh, hello, Mr. Rodriguez. Come in. Mr. Jones, you forgive this unexpected visit sooner than I planned. Ah, Miss Summers, how charming you look. Yes, and haven't I changed in the last two hours? <laughs> <laughs> Packing, Mr. Jones? I understood you were staying some days more. Well, uh, we got a hurry call. Oh, this gives me no time to cultivate the acquaintance of Miss Summers. I'll come back someday, Mr. Rodriguez. Or perhaps you are not even leaving, either of you. Hmm? What? You are not United States counter spies. You yourselves are the thieves of that uranium material. Mr. Rodriguez, you're all wrong. Further, you yourselves intend to sell it. We don't know anybody with a million dollars. Shut up, Ellen. You never let me talk. Miss Thomas, suppose you did know someone with a million dollars. We're American agents, Rodriguez. You are not. You're a pair of crooks. Now, suppose that vial contains the uranium compound, and you knew someone with a million... And a half dollars. Well, that'd be... Shut up, Ella. Go ahead, Rodriguez. Can you prove it is the real uranium compound? 
Let's say we could. Then in three days, I can raise a million and a half. Cash. American dollars. <laughs> and then you'll resell the material abroad for ten million, hmm? That would be my risk. Take the deal, Jonesy. Okay, Rodriguez. We'll prove it's the uranium compound. Six drops plus certain other ingredients can be set off by a cap attached to a fuse. Uh, uranium is not set off that way. I told you this is a new secret development. It can be used dozens of ways. You will show me now? If I let you know where the stuff is hidden, our lives wouldn't be worth a nickel. <laughs> Cautious, aren't you? Very well. Where and when? We'll pick you up tomorrow afternoon at 2.30 and lead you to some deserted spot in these mountains around here. Good. Until tomorrow, Mr. Jones, Miss Thomas. Oh, you won't see me there. I'm going over to Gulf City and wait for a phone call from Jonesy. And you? It shall come from me, Miss Thomas. One had better come from Jonesy, too, Mr. Rodriguez. Or I tell the Mexican police that you left him in the mountains with those man-eating birds you've got around here. <laughs> you are both very clever. Good night. Back to Counter Spy in just a moment. But first, Pepsi Cola hits a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? More and more, among fellows and girls, among mothers and dads, you hear that sane and sensible question, why take less when Pepsi is best? No budget, no allowance ever had a better friend than tangy, sparkling Pepsi-Cola. Because one big 12-ounce Pepsi bottle gives you two delicious drinks. That's twice as much tangy taste, twice as much delicious Pepsi to go just twice as far. That's why more and more families say, why take less when Pepsi's best? Yes, families like yours and mine. Families all over America. They're all saying, why take less when Pepsi's best? Pepsi Cola so delicious and each bottle makes two drinks. It is certainly the cola for the purchaser who thinks everybody's drinking Pepsi. Just compare it with the rest. So much more and so much finer. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Today, tomorrow, always. Get America's biggest cola value. Take home a carton of six big, big Pepsi bottles. Insist on Pepsi at the store. And say Pepsi at the fountain. Say Pepsi at the stand. Say Pepsi. Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, back to Counter Spy. It is hot, blazing noon in the desert mountains of Mexico. Rodriguez, we're 40 miles from any other human being. Now, here's where I've set up the experiment. Uh -huh. It'll be fairly safe, I hope. A few drops of the uranium compound plus the other ingredients and a fuse. If you're ready... Mr. Jones, look at those birds of prey circling above us in the empty sky. I guess we look like a meal to them, huh? We call them birds of death. They're cruel, powerful, bloodthirsty. If you try to cheat me, Mr. Jones, I will break both your legs with bullets and leave you here alive for those birds. Cute ideas you have, don't you? Light the fuse. Now run. We have eight seconds. Oh, hey! Mr. Jones, I fell! Help me up! Up with you! Three seconds lost. Come on. Behind these rocks. Just made it. Perfect, Mr. Jones. I apologize for my suspicions. I will have the money for you in 48 hours. Where? Your ranch house. Fine. And I'll be ready to show you where the material is. Until then, Mr. Jones... I'm driving away now.
Come on out, Ella. Coming. I thought sure he saw that wire run near the battery I'd hidden. Luckily for us, his greed's making him blind. What if he followed us out here last night when we set up this fake uranium explosion? When he fell down, he was really scared. He never suspected it was fake. But to fall for this, three cents worth of harmless powder posing as uranium, six charges of ordinary TNT. Stop worrying, Ella. We've got Rodriguez hooked. Come on, let's get to our ranch. Ranch life may be great, Jonesy, but I don't like cooking. Only another day to wait. For a vegetable, you want Mexican beans or Mexican beans? I'd rather have Mexican beans. Good, that's all we got. And then I... Put out the light. Got it. Out the back window. I saw somebody coming. Rodriguez, ahead of time? Get just beyond the doorway to the dining room. I'll stay here. You cover me with your gun. Right. Mr. Jones? Yeah. I'm David Harding, United States Counter Spies. May I come in? Can't stop you, can I? You alone? Yes, Chief. Okay, Ella, come on in. Coming. Mr. Harding, am I glad to see you. Hello, Ella. Sorry to put you two through this rigmarole. Dave, with Rodriguez around, safety first is the best motto. Oh, Peters, uh, I mean, uh, Mr. Jones, can we use the shortwave radio? Oh, uh, right here, Mr. Harding. It's hidden in the cupboard. I want the Mexican secret police in Cordoba. What's the frequency? Channel 18. Harding to SX, channel 18. Come in, channel 18. Hello, Pepe. Rodriguez has fallen for our cock and bull story about that stolen uranium. Now, all we need is one break so we can get other people to talk to us about Rodriguez. You'd better stand by in case they need help. Right. Now, Washington. Harding to Channel One. Come in, Channel One. Channel One, Mr. Harding, go ahead. Edwards. From now on, keep this channel open 24 hours a day. I may want instantaneous check on fingerprints. Right. I'm with Peters and Ella in Mexico in their ranch house. I flew in this morning when things got hot. We're getting the best line yet on our old friend Rodriguez, the espionage broker. I hope you land him this time, sir. We've got a baited hook out for him, but with that man, I'm not going to wait for him to bite. I'm going to cram it down his throat. with Joan. You know my temper. I, I hit him with a paperweight. Oh. I think I've killed him. Please help me. Of course, Ella. Where did you leave him? He's back in our ranch house. He's on the floor, all bloody. Mr. Rodriguez, I don't know what I'm going to do. My dear Ella, I'll look after you. But the police, they may discover the murder and look for me. If need be, I can hide you forever. What? Don't worry. We must go there at once. I don't want to go back there. My dear, I was planning to buy that uranium compound. Now, can't you and I get it for nothing? Come. Ella, it's pitch dark in here. I know. I cut the light and telephone wires when I left. You have a candle? Uh, yes. Yes, there's one beside you on the piano. Ah. Uh, here's our friend, Mr. Jones. Alive, thank heavens he's alive. But not very much alive. 
Now, the uranium compound. I know where it's hidden. Get it. Just a moment. Hidden behind a picture on the wall? What an obvious place. It was safe. You're the only one that even knew we had it. Let me have it. Here. Watch how you handle it. Now, to arrange matters for you. Me? You will leave all your clothes here except what you actually need. From the shallow grave of a woman I had to uh, dispose of, not far from here, I will... You will not mind being impersonated by the bones of a dead woman. I don't get it. Then we will smash this place up a bit. This bookend, that mirror, for instance. What are you doing? Planning your death, Miss Thomas. I've got a gun, Rodriguez. Your apparent death in this house burned out by an accidental fire. Oh. While you hide on my ranch until we go to Europe secretly. And now to finish off Mr. Jones. You're going to kill him before you set the fire? Of course. This other bookend will do. Stop it, Rodriguez. Hands in the air, Rodriguez. I'll take that bookend. Rodriguez, you're under arrest by the United States Congress Party. And the Mexican National Police. Ridiculous. One charge, violation of the international agreement covering the safety of atomic material and information. I was not in this alone. This woman, this man, Jones. By the way, Jonesy, you okay? Fine. Only tired of lying on the floor. Oh. Rodriguez, meet Mr. Jones, or let's call him Harry Peters, <laughs> my assistant. But you have no evidence. No one will dare to speak against me. Rodriguez, you're a murderer. You kept people silent by fear. The gunmen and narcotics runners who worked for you were afraid to talk. Now that you're under arrest, they'll be free to tell everything they know. By the way, Mr. Harding, here's the uranium wrapped up in his pocket. He earned that, Ella. Let him keep it. It's only a few cents worth of harmless powder. I'm sorry, Rodriguez, but illegal possession of uranium is the one charge we can't hang on you. When your friends drop in, be generous, but be thrifty, too. Serve plenty of delicious Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottle gives you not just one sparkling glass full, but two. Get a carton of six and serve 12 delicious drinks. Yes, Pepsi is America's biggest cola value. You get twice the tangy taste, twice the refreshment, twice the Pepsi. So why take less when Pepsi's best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, Remember, Pepsi-Cola hits a spot, two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station to Counterspy. Listen next Tuesday for the exciting Counterspy case of the bouncing bank robber. The quick-shooting intruder who power-plunged through a plate glass window. The ferry boat that whistled a strange message about the passenger who had jumped overboard, and the roller coaster in reverse that carried a killer who was beyond the electric chair. That's next Tuesday's Counterspy case. So be sure to listen. Case of the Bouncing Bank Robber on Counterspy. Tonight's Counterspy program originated in New York was directed by William M. Sweets and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer with music by Jesse Crawford. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi-Cola. Enjoy some Pepsi, ice cold tonight. (laughs) 